So this video is practice questions for the AP physics exam for the topic of electric forces and fields. And it can also be used for practice for the IB or GCSE exam. So for the first question, if the distance between two positive point charges is tripled, then the strength of the electrostatic repulsion between them will decrease by a factor of, and the answer is D, a factor of 9. And we can find this from Coulomb's law. So the initial force is F1 and the initial distance is R1. The final distance is triple the initial distance. So the final force of electrostatic repulsion Fe2 is given by this equation. And you can substitute for R2 as 3 R1 squared. And this gives F1 over 9. So if R is increased by a factor of 3, then Fe will decrease by a factor of 9. So for the second question, two 1 kilogram spheres each carry a charge of magnitude of 1 coulomb. How does Fe, the strength of the electric force between the spheres, compare to Fg, the strength of their gravitational attraction? This is the electrostatic force and this is the gravitational force. Since both these forces have r square in their denominator, so we only need to compare these two values. For 1 coulomb, this value is equal to 9 times 10 to the power of 9 newton times meter square and since each sphere is 1 kilogram then this value is equal to 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons times meter square and so the answer is c where the electrostatic force is much stronger than the gravitational force in this case so for the third question, the figure below shows three point charges all positive. If the net electric force on the center charge is zero, what is the value of y over x? So because the net electric force on the center charge is zero, then the electric repulsion by the plus 2q charge must balance the electric repulsion by the plus 3q charge. So this is the magnitude of the force exerted on plus q from this charge. And because it's repulsion, it's in this direction. And this is the force on this charge from the plus 3q charge. And it's directed in the opposite direction. And they are both equal because the net force on this charge is 0. From this we get 2 over x square is equal to 3 over y square or y over x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. So the answer is C. So for question 4, the figure above shows two point charges, plus Q and minus Q. If the negative charge were absent, then the electric field at point P due to plus Q would have strength E. With minus Q in place, what is the strength of the total electric field at P, which lies at the midpoint of the line sigma joining the charges? So the point P is equidistant from the two charges, and the magnitudes of the charges are identical. The strength of the electric field at P due to plus Q is the same as the strength of the electric field at P due to minus Q. So the electric field vector at P due to this charge is directed this way. And the electric field vector at P due to this charge is directed also this way. And since these two vectors point in the same direction, then the net electric field at P is E plus E equal to 2E to the right. So the answer is E. For question 5, a sphere of charge plus Q is fixed in position. A smaller sphere of charge plus Q is placed near the larger sphere and released from rest. The small sphere will move away from the large sphere with and the answer is increasing velocity and decreasing acceleration. And this is because the acceleration of the small sphere is equal to the electrostatic force over its mass. And this force is given by Coulomb's constant times big Q times small q over mR square. Because both charges are positive, then the small charge will be pushed away from the larger charge. And as the distance between them are increases as the small sphere is pushed away, then the acceleration will decrease. But because the acceleration is positive, it means that the small sphere is accelerating, although with decreasing acceleration. And this means the velocity is always increasing as it is pushed away. And so the answer is D. So for question 6, an object of charge plus Q feels an electric force Fe when placed at a particular location in an electric field E. Therefore, if an object of charge minus 2Q were placed at the same location where the first charge was, it would feel an electric force of... 
So the electric force on a charge is given by this equation. So the force, let's call it 1, on charge plus Q is given by this equation. And the force Fe2 on charge minus 2Q is given by this equation. And this is equal to minus 2Fe1. And so a charge of minus 2Q when placed at the same location where the first charge was would feel an electric force of minus 2Fe. And so the answer is B. So for question 7, a charge of minus 3Q is transferred to a solid metal sphere of radius R. Where will this excess charge reside? And the answer is D, which is that all excess electric charge in a conductor resides on the outer surface. So for question 8, the figure below shows four point charges and the cross section of a Gaussian surface. Which of the following statements is true concerning the situation depicted? So Gauss's law shows that the net electric flux through a Gaussian surface is equal to 1 over epsilon times the net charge enclosed by the surface. So the net electric flux depends only on the charge enclosed by the surface. But an electric field at any point depends on all the charges present whether inside or outside the surface and the answer is b the net electric flux through the gaussian surface depends only on charges q2 and q3 but the electric field at the point p here depends on all four charges so thank you for watching and see you in the next video